Yes. Hey guys, I got Dave uh, Miz, owner of Autoresponder Analytics, and uh, he's actually sold over tens of thousands of educational products online through Autopilot. You want to ask him how he's doing that? He's using it all through email, and he's doing it while he's sleeping. Dave, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So Dave, tell me a little bit about how you got started, because I know this didn't happen overnight where you just woke up and all of a sudden you had a bunch of money in your inbox like you do today. No, no, actually, uh, it was probably like quite the opposite. Um, so I got started back in like 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. Like this is like ancient times for, uh, you know, for internet and for uh, online marketing. Um, so probably like most people, I was curious about the internet and, um, you know, the idea I had was there's gotta be a way to make money on the internet. Um, so that kind of got me down the rabbit hole back then. I would, I had no idea like what the internet was or how to use it. I would spend like 15 minutes a day on ESPN because, you know, as a guy like, you know, sports, that's all, you know. Yeah. Um, so like 15 minutes started, you know, I started doing searching and all this kind of stuff. And, um, I ended up learning how to design websites back then. Um, and I found myself on the computer all day, like just learning how to design websites and working and, um, I started figuring out like there was people making money on the internet, like working from home and stuff. And there was like a whole little community back then. So kind of got into this forums and stuff like that. And I saw that the websites were absolutely like atrocious. They were like front page. You know, if anybody's like been around long enough, uh, everybody was using Microsoft front page to yeah, make these like really I, ugly. I know, I know front page. That was the first website I created in 2004. Yeah, so you can imagine like everything was like super ugly and um, you know, I, here I was this like designer and I was like, wait a second, you know, there's got to be a way to make these things better looking, you know, because they look like crap. And, and it was like an uphill battle because, you know, the, like people just weren't educated in this community back then. Now it's like a different story. People know the real, you know, they realize the uh, value of the design. So, um, so I started off designing websites for like a couple hundred bucks and I would focus in only on online marketers. So that was like my specialty. Um, and I got really good at it, but I wasn't making any money. Um, I had some clients now looking back, they were, you know, really big marketers, but back then I had no idea, you know, who they were. Um, and I remember like the thing that kind of kicked it off was I would go to Starbucks to work, you know, during the day, you know, instead of working from home. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm pulling into the Starbucks parking lot and I get a random phone call. I don't recognize the, the number, but I answer the phone and this guy tells me his name is Armand Morin. And Armand back then, this is like 04, uh, he's like one of the biggest marketing gurus on the planet. Um, so I was like shocked. You know, I'm sitting in the parking lot and he's telling me he saw my work, he really likes my websites and uh, he wants me to work for him. So I was like, holy crap, you know, this is awesome. Uh, so we negotiated a price. So that's like Michael Jordan calling you from the NBA at the time. And he's like, come, come play for my team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, how does this guy know who I am? Like, or any of the stuff I'm doing, you know, um, I'm just lowly Dennis Rodman down here in San Antonio. Calls him yeah. Back. I'm like even worse. I'm like in the D league, <laughs> you know, and like Michael Jordan's telling me like, Hey man, come, come play on my team. Um, so I get the call up and we negotiate a price and I'm like waiting for the PayPal to come in all day and it doesn't come in. I'm like refreshing every hour, every half hour. <laughs> so I'm thinking somebody's playing a prank on me. Like I'm, I'm really convinced at this point someone's playing a prank. So like two days go by and there's no PayPal. So, you know, like my hopes were like all the way up here and now they're like, you know, all the way at the bottom. Yeah. So, uh, two days later I get a PayPal boom. And it's like the most money I'd made on the internet at this point. So I was like stoked, you know, um, so I did the work for him and he introduces me to one of his other uh, friends, uh, Alex Mendosian. And Alex was working with a lot of clients, like big authors and, and stuff like that. So I started doing a lot of work for him uh, with some other authors, like Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just different stuff like that. And that was kind of really, really awesome. You know, like I yeah, finally they sold, kind of they sold a few books over the years, didn't they? A couple, <laughs> just, just, just a couple. Um, so I still wasn't making much money at this point, but um, Armand invited me to his seminar. Back then he was doing these things called the big seminar and they were like the biggest uh, you know, seminars in the industry. So uh, this was like the end of 2014. And I kind of gave myself a little deadline at this point. Like I was like, you know, it's time like shit or get off the pot, so to speak. Like I'm not making enough money to continue. So I need to figure something out, you know, like something's got to give here. So uh, I went and I went to like Vistaprint because they had like free business cards and I had no money to buy uh, cards. So, I, you know, I got a couple hundred free cards 
and I go to Los Angeles to the seminar and, you know, I, I had the intention, like I'm going and I'm going to like bust ass at this seminar to try to make this work. And when I got there, I was like amazed. There was like 500 people at this seminar. I mean, it was like mind boggling. You know, you I have thought, no business cards. Uh, I thought I did. <laughs> um, so, at, you know, like towards the last day of the event, uh, I'm standing up in the back of the room. There's like 500 people in the seminar and Armin's on stage and he said, okay, how many people here need a website? Like, you know, 500 people raise oh their hand. Oh my gosh. And he said, you know, like there's only one person I've ever hired other than myself to do any website work for me. And he's in the back of the room and he points right at me, like, and the lights, like all the dudes with the lights, like, <laughs> converge. you know, and, and I'm not like the most social person, you know, so, nah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I was like shocked. I was like, holy shit, like all these lights are on me. And like, everybody turned around and started looking at me. Did it stampede your table or what? Well, there was no table, but I was just standing in the back. So oh, keep boy. in mind now, there was no WordPress back then. There's no click funnels. There's no any of these other softwares. Oh, you yeah. either knew how to design it yourself or you hired somebody like me to do it. Um, within two minutes, it was like a tsunami of people, like a wave. I got bum rushed. Like people were just nonstop. And I had these like box of cards and I just held them up because I couldn't even hand them out fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like held up the box of cards. What an they investment. Were what they an were investment. Missed the print. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah. They were, uh, those cards were gone, uh, like in minutes, which was awesome. So, um, at that event, I ended up going to, I, I was at the bar, like on one of the breaks. And, and, you know, the first thing I could say is go to as many events as possible if you're watching this. Um, second thing is spend a lot of time at the bar. Cause that's like where most of the stuff goes down. I, and I'm not a big drinker. I'm not a big drinker either, but, um, I met this guy at the bar and it turns out he, he was like dating one of the speakers, like sister's wife's sister or something like that. So they invite me to go to this other seminar like a few months later. So, uh, I go to this other seminar and I'm like the last person sitting down, you know, I'm like, I woke up late and I'm sitting next to this one guy and, you know, it turns out to be Mike Phil same who's like a really big internet marketer. So we yeah. struck up a friendship there. And sure enough, I ended up doing work for him, designing his butterfly marketing website back in the day, did like seven figures in a week. Mm -hmm. So you never know who you're going to meet at these events. You never know who they're going to end up turning out to be. I mean, he was making like $10,000 a month when I met him. Now he's, you know, he's been doing, you know, millions of dollars a year. So yeah, you just never know. Um, so at this point, you know, I go to these seminars and I'm like, my mind is blown. I said, okay, now I need to make a product. But I had no idea like what I was going to do. Um, you know, I, I had tried a couple of products previously unsuccessfully. So uh, at, at this point, for the last like three, four years up until that point, I was doing really good with uh, online dating. So I was spending a lot of time working on the computer, doing websites and stuff. And I just didn't have time to like go out. So I figured, let me just try this online dating thing. So, just, so the online dating, just to understand is. You mean you created a business around online dating. You weren't going out and using all the websites to pick up. No, I was actually at this point using like match.com, like plenty okay. of finish and all that stuff. And I was going out with a lot of women. Oh, you know? got it. And, okay. you know, because I was a little bit, I was in school. I was a little bit older than everybody at school. So yeah. there was a little bit of a disconnect. So I got really good at it to the point where my friends would always ask me to go out and I never had any time. I would, I would always like, I'm sorry, man, I, I can't, I've got a date today. What about tomorrow? Uh, I've got a date tomorrow. What about Friday? I've got two dates on Friday. What about Saturday? I've got three on Saturday. No, no lie. So at this point, my friends were like, what's going on here? So they would all come over and they would like, show me what the, what you're doing here, you know, because they just didn't have any, any success with it. So I started showing them what I was doing. And so they started doing it and then they started having a lot of results too. So I'm starting to think now, hmm, okay, this is kind of interesting. And the, I got the idea really because I started getting random phone calls or emails from their friends. So like your friend, Bob would message me and say, Hey man, I'm friends with Daryl. And he told me you were like really good with online dating stuff. Can you show me how to do it? And this would happen like over and over and over. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Like, I, I don't think I met this person like once maybe in my life. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty interesting. Then like I would go, it would go like three levels deep. Like Bob, who's friends with John, who's friends with Daryl messaged me. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, this is, this is like insane. I got to make a product about this. So I had met this uh, a friend of mine uh, on one of these websites, uh, marketing websites. We became really good friends and he started working for Evan Pagan. Uh, Evan had this dating product back then called Double Your Dating. 
which was like $20 million a year business. Yeah, famous. He's famous. Super, super famous. I mean, everybody who knows marketing you know, famous, knows his business. Famous. So my friend at the time was doing customer support. Okay. Really, you know, like bottom of the bucket at this point. Um, and he said, he said, look, I told Evan what you're doing and he wants to interview you for his product for his, uh, interview series. So we, uh, I was like stoked, you know, I had bought his product, you know, a few years back and I had great success with it. So I was like, you know, this is awesome. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to make a product at some point and I'm doing this interview with, with Evan. And at the end, he tells me that the interview is going to come out like in a few months. So I figure, okay, I've got like two, three months of like window to make this product and figure out all the details. Well, like not even two weeks go by and it's like a Saturday morning. Uh, I'm on my computer and uh, I wake up hungover and I check my what email. Dates you were not on. Yeah, like <laughs> one of the three that night probably. Um, I mean, I was going out with a lot. I was like taking it to an extreme. I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> um, so uh I check my email. There's like 500 emails and they all basically say that they're like from random people and they all basically say the same thing. Uh, I went to the website and there's nothing there. Oh, so, they, so I'm like, want to buy your product. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't even know that the interview was out. So I emailed like a bunch of these guys back. I'm like, uh, okay, like what interview and what product, <laughs> what website? <laughs> and they say, uh, your interview with, uh, with David okay. D'Angelo with Evan. And I was like, oh shit, thanks for giving me like the two month heads up, you know, <laughs> it was like two weeks. <laughs> two months in his world is two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, what do I do now? I, I work on a Mac and back then there was no, no software to record your, your screen on a Mac. Yeah. There was like one software and it was really buggy. It always crashed your Mac. So I'm thinking, okay, who do I know that has a PC? Cause I need to make some videos like right away. Yeah. So, um, I spent all weekend making a, a little opt-in page and, and just a simple website just to collect leads. Cause I figured I'm getting all these leads coming in now. Um, I've got to capture the leads. I've got to take advantage of the list and I've got to make this product. I'm like, Oh shit. So my buddy's like working or he's going out all weekend partying and I'm spending the whole weekend on this computer making these, these videos. And, uh, around this time, you know, there was like a two week gap. So I figure, okay, I can't let these leads get cold. You know, if I don't email them, they're just going to like die off and forget who I am. So I started sending out these email tips, you know, just random tips, you know, do this, do that. You know, this works great. That works great. And at the end, I didn't have anything to sell yet. So I just kept saying like, it's coming. I'm, you know, it, it, we're a few weeks away. It's coming. <laughs> and I didn't realize, but I was actually doing a product launch without even knowing. Without what even realize it. You stumbled yeah. into how to do a product launch. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just kind of winging it, kind of doing what I thought yeah, was right. You off the cliff and you just like started flapping your wings. Yeah, man. I was just, I had to, you know, it was like shit or get off the pot, right? Yeah. So, um, so I, I was like doing this for a couple of weeks. I burned the CDs and, and I sent them to this fulfillment company and um, getting ready. I write a whole sales letter. I had no idea what the hell I was doing with that. But I had, I had uh, formatted enough sales pages over the last few years for other people that I kind of, you know, when you're formatting a letter for somebody else, you know, you're reading line by line by line. So I kind of knew a little bit of a structure on, on how to do it. So I did the best I could. Um, I was selling the DVD for 97 bucks. Now remember, this is 2005. We had no upsells. There was no such thing as upsells back then. Uh, yeah. There was no back end. You know, I didn't know what the hell that was. Um, I didn't know anybody that was selling in the niche. So I had no affiliates. Um, I had no idea how to do SEO or buying traffic back then was kind of weird. Um, so I didn't know how to do that either. Um, so I built up a list of 1,788 people that have watched, listened to this interview, uh, went to the website, put their email address in and they were like, you know, ready to go. So I sent these emails for a few weeks and launched it, uh, did like $39,000 the first day. Wow. Now, mind you, I had $2,000 to my name at this point. Okay. Yeah, so it's $39,000 to your name. Yeah. Right. So this was like huge, man. You know, like this was huge. I knew at this point, like my, my life was never going to be the same again. Um, so I remember the day very like, like it was yesterday. Uh, I was living upstairs for my folks. Um, and remember at this point I was like, should or get off the pot time, you know, yeah. uh, I was going to have to get a job or something at this point. So I, I ran downstairs in the morning and I was like, you know, Hey dad, you know, I was telling my dad at like, I made like $2,000. Did It was like in one ear, out the other ear. Didn't even move. Like he was just laying down like, like I, I didn't even say anything to him. So go back upstairs, 
doing whatever I'm doing, refresh again, come downstairs. I'm at like $8,000. Doesn't flinch, doesn't make a, you know, doesn't even move. Keep doing this all afternoon. I think when I got to like 14 and a half thousand, he was like, what? He turned around and looked at me <laughs> like, what? And, and then didn't say anything else. Come, come back upstairs, downstairs, 22 and a half thousand. And he turned around at this point and he said to me, what are you doing? He's like, is it legal? <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? You know, my dad is Israeli. So Israelis are always like hustlers, man. You know, so uh, he's like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm just selling stuff on the internet. Okay. Went back upstairs, came back downstairs. 30, you know, when I told him it was 39,000 for the day, he was like, oh my God, what are you, what are you doing? You know? So, uh, you know, everything was great. I did like a hundred grand the first month. Wow. Uh, I was on cloud nine. I mean, to go from like $2,000 to your name to making a hundred grand in a month. It's awesome. Um, yeah. It's awesome. And it, you know, it, it kind of validates like, okay, like maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this thing actually does work and maybe I have an idea of like what I'm doing. So at, at this point I'm at the top of the mountain or so I thought. And my, my, the next day, like my dad woke up and he was feeling pains in his stomach and uh, we took him to the ER and it turns out he had stage four cancer. Oh my God. So, I mean, totally out of the blue. My dad was healthy, never drank or smoked or anything like that. So, I mean, this was like a big shocker. Um, yeah. you know, this was like life or death. So the whole time I had that business for the next couple of years, I really try to figure out how to do as little as I could so I can spend as much time as possible with my dad. Cause you know, my dad was the most important person in my life, yeah. you know? So, um, I figured out the, the easiest way to do that was email, you know? So I really focused on making sure that my email system and my email stuff was you know, like rock solid. So I didn't know if I could make any other products cause I basically was an idiot and put everything I knew into this one product instead of kind of breaking it up uh, in, into different things. So I didn't really have anything else to sell. I wasn't good at anything else. I, you know, when it came to dating, it was just that I created a system for, for online dating. So, um, I figured, okay, let me just keep emailing, you know, cause if they're on my list, they, they've got to be interested in this. And if they're not buying, then, you know, that, like, that's on me. So I just kept emailing. And unfortunately my dad passed away like two and a half years later. So this was like 2007. And like, I was like, okay, like shit just got real at this point, you know? Um, you know, I had my mom and my sister to take care of now and here I'm selling some weird dating product, you know, and that's how I'm taking care of my mom and sister and myself. So I went to the seminar, uh, from Evan Pagan. Uh, he invited me to come to this altitude seminar where I he was teaching. That. You were there at that. Yeah. It was a five day event in Los Angeles. He was teaching how he built this $20 million a year dating business. Yeah. Um, and I knew I had to get real serious about this. So I went there with, with an open mind and um, I learned as much as I could. And one of the days at lunch, um, I had lunch with Frank Kern. Mm. Now I knew Frank. Uh, we kind of met a, a couple times previously through a, a mutual friend. But um, he had told me about this new product he was working on and he wanted me to do the uh, designs for it. So I was like, sure, no problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so that turned out to be mass control. Wow. So many people don't know, but I was actually the, the designer behind that, that you know, created the logos and the, the whole idea and the concept. I love their stuff. I, I still have that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like iconic now. It's been ripped off. Like, it's, you know, ripped off. You know, it's been ripped off again, you know. That, and the sales from that, I think, wasn't that like a million dollars in the, in the first day or something? Oh, he did tens of millions of dollars. And, and you know, I, I love to say it was because of me and sure, like, sure. designs, but you know, absolutely not. So you did designs for the, for the program. I mean, did you yeah, I mean, I the did websites the websites and all that stuff? I did the website for it. I did this, the logo, which was like iconic. Um, yeah. You know, he, he wanted something looking like official looking and like kind of badass. So we, we I kind of used it like a, uh, like a like a government seal. seal. Yeah. It looked like this. Kind of, what it looked like is a seal from the president in a way. It was actually, uh, the, the idea came from a, uh, I had a, uh, something that I saved. It was like from the Federal Reserve or something like that. Yeah. It, that was the original um, where I, where I kind of got the idea from because my, uh, my dating product was, is called Insider Internet Dating. So the concept was all about like military kind of insider stuff. And, ah. um, you know, so he saw that, you know, the seals that I, that I kind of used on that. And then he's like, okay, I want something like this, but, you know, a little bit more evil looking or you know, official looking. So. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, I actually didn't take any money from him for that. I actually told him just to uh, teach me, uh, because I felt like, you know, that would be more valuable to me yeah. than, uh, you know, just getting paid. Um, so that copy. 
Yeah, and I learned a lot, you know, about emails and about characters and, and, and you know, kind of weaving that kind of stuff into, uh, you know, into the emails. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the common theme there, again, is email, you know, because I was making most of my money through sending out emails. So, uh, yeah, so I think at this point, you know, everything was going okay. I mean, I was making decent money, and um, we fast forward to uh, 2010, and then my mom gets cancer. <laughs> um, so, so luckily, they caught it early, and, and she's okay. But, you know, like the whole time I've had this, this business that was like going like this, I, 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 I had no like mental capacity to, uh, you know, to deal with it. You know, I was so focused on my dad and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, my mom at that point, um, you know, that it was just you know, like, it was absolutely crazy, you know, and it, and it kind of sucks, you know, you wonder why things like that happen to you when you're, you know, finally hit something good. Uh, you know, people always think like this kind of stuff is, you know, it's easy and, you know, nothing happens and everything's great. And, it's called life, you know, yeah. Face. yeah, I mean, sometimes it happens, you know, and it, you, you just have no control over that kind of stuff. You know, you just have to kind of take it the best that you can and, um, it really gave me the, the ability to have perspective on life. Um, so a lot of things that I was chasing after before or thought were important, just, you know, they weren't really important, you know, when, you know, when I really had to deal with this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, That's so true. My, my mom has actually had cancer as well. Dave. And, uh, you know, we've had long history of health problems in my family of, you know, yeah, it sucks, man. You know, it's like, that's like life or death kind of stuff, you know, and, um, you know, that's when shit kind of gets real. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad she's okay. And, uh, you know, that's knock on wood. How's so mom doing now? she's doing good, man. She's doing really good. Uh, you know, knock on wood, you know, everything's fine, but you know, it's the big toll, you know, like think about it, you know, like you, even though I'm doing okay, uh, you know, I still have my mom to support. I've got myself to support. I'm married, you know, so, you know, it, it's not all peachy and rosy all the time. You know, it, it's, it's life, you know, not everybody has the same path, you know, and you know, that's the thing you see on Facebook, every, you know, everybody's bawling and everybody's doing great sure. and everything's happy and, you know, rosy and stuff. And, you know, it's not the case for everybody all the time, you know, so it's just part of life. And uh, so around this time, um, I was like, okay, I need to do something else. And I need to get some legitimacy to, you know, because it's kind of weird telling people, you know, when people ask you what you do. And you're like, oh, I sell dating products. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of, yeah. it's kind of weird. It's kind of bizarre. Um, and you get these like weird looks from people. So at the same time though, Dave, I mean, you, you've helped a lot of people, probably meet a lot of people that you would have never got a chance to meet otherwise. I and mean, there's a lot of guys out there. I know that just don't have the confidence to walk up to a woman and buy her a drink or, you know, ask her out or, you know, I'm sure you did a lot of good with. The oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, like think about it. Like there's nothing wrong with if you're in sales and you, you take a sales training class to try to get better at that. There's nothing wrong with being going to a personal development class. So, you know, I've been very fortunate. I've helped tens of thousands of guys. Um, I get emails all the time from guys that are thanking me for, uh, for helping them. I think, um, as far as I know, there's like seven to 10 guys that emailed me and said, you know, they, they actually met their wives using the, the stuff. That's awesome. awesome. You know, it's a, it's a lot of good karma. So, um, but I needed some legitimacy to what I was doing because, you know, imagine sure. going out on a date with a girl and telling, what do you do for a living? Oh, I have uh, <laughs> products. What, what did you tell the women that you went out with, Dave? Because it sounds like I told them I did online marketing, which is true. I mean, I did online marketing. I wasn't, yeah. you know, wasn't lying or anything. Um, so I, at this point, I was in Whole Foods and I bumped into an old friend of mine from high school and completely random. I hadn't seen him in years. And he said, look, I, I bought these DVDs from uh, Evan Pagan of Altitude. And I saw you in the audience taking notes and I probably um, watched the same DVDs. Yeah. You. you probably saw me. I had a lot, yeah. a lot more hair back then. A lot so, more hair back then. <laughs> yeah, man, this is what working online does to you. you know, a lot of stress. <laughs> um, so he saw me in the audience and he's like, dude, I've been trying to sell this golf product for years and I, I'm having a hard time with it. Can we like talk about it sometime? So I met him at Starbucks and um, I, I know he, he puts out like really awesome stuff. He's an expert at what he does, but he just can't sell. Sure. So I said, okay, this is like a cool challenge for me, you know, like to, uh, to see if what I'm doing works in another niche, you know, see if I can just take kind of what I've learned and, you know, in this stuff for these years and kind of put it into another niche. So, so we did that and it took a, a couple of tweaks and changes and stuff like that. So we put this golf offer up and it's doing really well now. So, um, yeah, so that was really cool because, you know, you know, was that? You guys uh, that was like three years ago probably, but, uh, it took about a year and a half to, uh, to really get going. Uh, it took about three or four rounds of changes of tweaks 
uh, you know, trying things that didn't work, you know, like we would get like one sale every other day or something like that, which, sure. which kind of sucked. Um, and that's the thing, like very few things you do work right out of the gate the first time, you know, a lot of these things you, you have to, you have to keep tinkering with them. What do, you, what do you mean? You mean I just don't put money in my computer just spits out on the other side? Yeah. Right. Yeah, like everybody <laughs> thinks that, right. It's, uh, you know, people think like, Oh, you just do it. And everything you do t turns to money. And really? you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, you have to actually invest in advertising and marketing to see if you get a return on it. Yeah. You, you have to do that. And, and it, it takes testing and tweaking, you know, like, uh, I think it took us like three video sales letters to actually get it, you know, dialed in, um, which isn't too bad because on the dating side, uh, you know, it took probably like 20 <laughs> versions to, uh, to, you know, to kind of get anything comparable. But, um, so that was really good. I mean, it, it's just validation, uh, in your mind that, okay, what I'm doing is kind of working. Um, so it took you, took you, I just want to give people a, a reference time frame wise. It took a year and a half to get that product actually going. And in that time period, how much time and energy and effort and money did you spend in that year and a half working on that? Uh, I definitely spent a lot of time and energy. Um, I, I had to write three different video sales letters. So you're looking at like what, six to 9,000 words each one, mm -hmm. which, which is, you know, I mean, uh, you know, even if you know how to write, it's still a pain yeah. in the ass. And I'm just trying to give people perspective on the sense of like, you know, one of the things about, you know, being an entrepreneur and monetizing the ideas that you have inside your mind is what you and your friend basically doing is mm -hmm. you had to go out and turn those ideas into income. And that's just not an overnight thing. You know, that's one of those things where sometimes you have to figure out what people respond back to. And, and I, I don't look at there's any failure in life. There's only feedback. So it's like you're getting feedback on what's working and what's not. And then you can get that feedback right away and then you could make changes, corrections and, and kind of go after it. Yeah. I mean, the biggest issue was that he had no audience and if he had an audience, then you could just plug in a product right away and, and hopefully start seeing some money. So that's the biggest problem that people have is that they don't have an audience. They don't have a platform. Got so, it. and that was a big mistake. You know, I wouldn't say a big mistake partnering with him, but a big mistake in general, because you know, if you don't have the audience, you really have nothing. The product, it, unfortunately, is really the least important part of the whole process. The audience is the most important part in having a relationship with them. Uh, the sales process is the other most important part. And, and then the product is, you know, the least important part because you can have the best product, but if you have none of these two, no one's going to buy it. No one's going to see it. Sure. So usually it's the other way around. People think that the product is the most important part, but it, you know, it's not, you can have a great product, but if you can't sell it, I mean, how many great products are there out there? And there's you know, so many great products, great ideas that never make it in the market because there's not the marketing and sales. I, I had a great discussion with um, a friend the other day, Ira Rosen, and he's got $2 billion worth of sales. And the exact same thing he was saying is He's like, you're, you're a marketing and advertising company that sells water bottles, that sells real estate, that sells marketing and advertising. I mean, that's, you have to be marketing and advertising first. That's supposed to be 80% of your time spent on that, 20% on your product. And most people flip-flop it, yep. and they spend 20% of their time on you know, working on their, uh, their marketing and advertising, and they just think the product's going to sell itself. It's, uh, I, I wish that was the case, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's totally not the, you yeah. know, the audience is by far the most than the, the sales process and then the product. Uh, and then the product is third because, you know, you can have a shitty product to have great, all these two, and then you get a lot of refunds, you know, and then you lose your merchant account. Uh, you know, you, you have a lot of chargeback issues and stuff like that. So, so that kind of sucks. Uh, you know, if you end up in that situation. So, um, yeah, it took a lot of tweak, a lot of tweaking, a lot of, you know, a lot of changes and stuff like that. But, you know, when you get it dialed in, you know, you, then you can start to really, you know, rock and roll with it. And that's where things get real fun. Um, so after 18 months of doing that, then you hit the point where you're like, you're starting to, to get traction. And then what has it done since? And, and then we lost our Facebook ad account. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to deal with that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it's always something, man. It's yeah. always something. I always tell friends in the industry, like, you know, at some point in the year, shit's going to hit the fan. Something's going to happen. Something's going to break. Uh, you're going to lose your ad account, or maybe a merchant account issues or whatever. Something's going to happen. So like yeah. something. And, and this is part of what you have to deal with. And then this is what you get as far as, you know, to be able to work from home, work from wherever you want and make a lot of the money. You know, this is kind of one of the things that you have to deal with, you know, so it's just par for the course. 
Um, no pun intended on the golf game. So. No, not really. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, it just happens, you know, it, you know, you just got to roll with the punches and, uh, you know, just figure out a way, you know, I always love that from, uh, I think there's a quote from Kobe Bryant. I saw a video and he was talking about that. You know, he was like, you know, nobody gives a fuck, you know, like part of the French, but nobody gives a fuck. You got to find a way to overcome it. You know, if you're hurt, you got to figure out a way to get by it, you know, to rehab yourself. If, you know, if you want to be the best player, you got to figure out a way. You know, no so, excuses. Yeah, no excuses. I mean, like I, I, I can sit here and tell every excuse in the book. My dad died. My mom was sick. I've got to deal with this, that, the other. I mean, who cares? You know, no one wants to yeah. hear it. Um, nobody, wants know, to hear it. nobody gives a fuck. You know, nobody, like I always everybody to, wants the winner. Everybody yeah. wants the winner. Yeah, I always used to tell myself that because I remember watching this video from Kobe Bryant, and I used to say, like, you know, stop, stop telling yourself that. Nobody cares. You know, nobody cares. You just got to find a way to overcome it. You know, and I know you being in the military, you probably have heard that kind of stuff for oh, years. Absolutely. You've got to find a way to overcome, you know. Yeah, we call it, it, it's called adapt and overcome in the Marine yeah. Corps. <laughs> what is it, like improvise, adapt, overcome, yeah. like that kind of stuff. There you go. Yeah. So I, I always remember that stuff in my head, like, you know, this is war, man. You know, oh, like, yeah, it doesn't Marine. matter. I mean, we go into combat and uh, – it's like the, the, there's no food. Okay, well, you let you eat less. <laughs> yeah, you gotta eat, eat the dirt. You know, like you eat, eat somebody's leg or something. Do something. You know, like what are you gonna do? Call McDonald's or Domino's? Like no, they don't deliver there. <laughs> yeah, you're you're up up the creek, man. You know. Oh man. So, um, so, so yeah. So, what's the best way for uh, somebody to kind of learn more about like what you're doing now? And I know that you have a, a great program. Uh, and how you're able to help people with marketing their businesses and stuff. I know that's what you're the, the Jedi on. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it kind of came full circle towards the end of this whole thing. So, you know, like 2011, 2012, you know, I, I, I had this intuition, just inner feeling like. Jedi uh, mind force happening for you. Yeah, like I wasn't fulfilling myself, you know, like uh, I, you know, after my dad passed, I kind of was over the whole dating stuff. It was like, what, what is this? You know, it's not important for me. I don't really give a shit about this. Um, and, and I felt like I wasn't maximizing my potential. Mm -hmm. And I just had that, you know, maybe if you're watching this, maybe you feel like that yourself or you've had, you know, that kind of, those kind of thoughts. Um, I felt like I wasn't, you know, maximizing what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was going to do next. Yeah. And um, I, I went for a couple of years like this. I was just kind of coasting. Uh, making good money and I uh, I was at a seminar about 2012 ish 2013 and this will tie in to the what you're what you just what you just mentioned mm -hmm. um, and one of the guys that was speaking was from mindvalley.com I don't know if you know who they are yep. uh, they're like a huge eight figure high eight figure year self-help the personal development company and they were talking about how they track all their emails and they had one slide up on the PowerPoint presentation and it had a, a picture of an Excel spreadsheet and they were talking about how they have one of their VAs or employees every day for a couple hours go into like this system, that system and the other system and inputting all the information into the spreadsheet. And this is how they keep track of it. And me being a lot of doing a lot of emails, I was like, you know, this is chaotic. You know, they're doing like eight figures a year and this is how they do it. You know, it's like 2014, like there's gotta be a better way or some kind of software. And I looked and there was nothing out there. And I was having this kind of problem for myself. I, I had a hard time keeping track of what I was doing and what was working and not working. So uh, I ended up buying a domain name and like most of us didn't do anything with it. Just let it sit there. And I was in a mastermind in the beginning of 2015 with Kam Mirza. Uh, he's, I met him at a seminar uh, previous and, and this is like by far the wealthiest person I've ever met in my life. Um, and not just met, but actually had a conversation with, I mean, the guy's worth like five, $600 million self-made. Yeah. And I remember my parents always telling me, you want to associate with people that are doing better than you. Um, and I, I always remember that. And so he invited me to this mastermind and it's like January, 2015 and it's late, late one night. We had a couple of beers. We're like the last two people up. And he said, look, I don't, I can't really help you with the dating stuff. I don't really know anything about that stuff. Um, but unless you get lucky with a, a traffic source or some kind of crazy copywriting or something, you're not really going to get rich or make the kind of money you want to make. What else do you have? And, and I told him, I really, I don't have much. I don't really have anything else, but you know, I, I had this idea for some software and I started telling him about this story about Mind Valley and, you know, uh, about this, how they're tracking their emails. And I started to explain to him this idea that I had for this email tracking software. And he looked at me and he said, 
that that's actually a really good idea. And I was like, I was blown away. I was like, what? You know, we had a couple beers too. So, you know, I was a little tipsy, but uh, I was like shocked. I was like, really? This, this, is, is, at, this is at the bar again, right? No, this is, yeah, this is uh, at the pool actually. At, we, had, pool. we had rented a big bar, house. So. <laughs> and um, yeah, we were just sitting out by the pool, by the water and uh, uh, just having some beers, shooting the shit. And um, I was shocked. You know, when somebody like that's worth that kind of money uh, tells you it's a good idea. And then he said, you should actually pursue this. You should build this. And I was like, whoa, you know, like maybe I'm not crazy after all. Maybe, uh, who knows? Um, so when someone like that tells you to build it, you build it. Yeah. You, you, you go to work. Uh, now I had never built software before in my life. Um, all I had, all I had at this point was some sketches in my journal. I took this pen and I had like five sketches of each page and just mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, notes of what each page does. And I went, you know, went to work, found developers, and, and that was what two years ago now, almost. Uh, we're, yeah, about two years ago right now. So it took 19 months to build, um, and we're about to release it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's called Autoresponder Analytics, and it's an email tracking platform. So for me, the biggest problem was I was sending out a lot of emails, and I didn't know what emails were making me money and what emails weren't. Uh, I didn't know which topics were working or which wasn't. I didn't know who my buyers were, uh, how they were buying. Um, I didn't know the lifetime value of my subscribers or, or of a customer. Um, I didn't even know how long it took me to turn an opt-in into a buyer. So these are all things that I needed to find out. And I built the software that does that. So the, the software basically allows you to understand if you're monetizing the audience that you're building. Yeah, I mean, it really allows you to see if you're doing email, you know, sequences or broadcasts. It allows you to see which emails, how each email is performing, how much money each email is making you, uh, how much email, e you know, it's not making you, uh, which emails are performing great, which ones aren't. Hmm. Um, it, it gives you demographic data on your buyers so you can see in the campaigns where they're coming from, which countries, which states are the best for you, which countries are the best for you. Um, you know, how they're buying, like which devices, um, and then even which, uh, you know, email provider, you know, for example, G is Gmail the best provider for you is uh, AOL, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it really lets you zero in on who your buyer is, where they're buying, how they're buying and, and which emails are actually working and which ones aren't, which is huge, you know, for anybody that's buying any kind of traffic on Facebook or anything, if you're building any kind of list, you know, if you're sending out any kind of emails whether you're you know, a blogger, uh, a brick and mortar company or anything, uh, internet marketer. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, so it's pretty badass, and we're, we're getting ready to release that. So, you know, I always think people, you know, things happen for a reason in life and maybe there's a reason why I met calm at that point in my life. You know, I was kind of having that intuition myself and he kind of confirmed, uh, you know, at that, at that event, he kind of confirmed my intuition of, uh, you know, try something else. Maybe this, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be, but, that's yeah. phenomenal, Dave. So basically, again, you had an idea that was in your mind based off something you saw in the marketplace that was an issue mm -hmm. and you went out and solved it. And then you actually took action on it and built a platform for people like myself and other people out there that can go out and really dial in their marketing that much further to see if it's actually working. Yep. That's, that's phenomenal. And I know that's something you're passionate about because you had to go through and God knows how many emails you've sent out over the years. So. Tens, hundreds, and hundreds yeah. of millions. <laughs> hundreds of millions. <laughs> hundreds of millions of emails. Probably hundreds of millions. Yeah, my my list is probably sick of getting them too. But do do you have any uh, any bribes or offers you could throw out to, to everybody who's listening? And I, I can put it in the show notes too, where they can um, actually go back and and uh, download actually, like a course, or is there a website they should go to? Do you have like a? I know you're you're doing a launch formula right now. I'm sure you've got a you know opt-in page they can go to somewhere. Um, they can go to autoresponderanalytics.com and, and they can check it out there and, uh, you know, request an invite to the, uh, for the software and stuff. And, um, yeah, yeah. Find out about it from there. It's awesome. You got to get it. So one of the things in business, I always kind of look at this and I learned this from talk on Matt Bazak is, you know, it, it's always about getting to like the source. And oftentimes there's a lot of people out there who will, they'll learn something from somebody and they kind of pass it off onto their on the like that something that they actually really know but then when you ask them four or five questions about a certain topic to talk about you realize that they really don't know crap 
You know, they mm-hmm. might just know some basic stuff. So if anybody's listening to this, realize that you guys are hearing from the horse's mouth about how to really do email marketing and how to build large lists and, and the guy who did it uh, through the trenches and, you know, started out with less than two grand in his account to, to get things rock and rolling. So Dave, I, I, I commend you for what you've accomplished. And um, if there was one, one last parting shot, if it was somebody out there who's listening to this and you had to go back and talk to your younger self at that point in time where you're really not sure what you're doing, you're just getting started and you could give just one piece of advice to that individual, that younger Dave, what would you tell him? Oof, I would tell him so much, but I would tell him really to fail fast and fail often. Um, and, and really just learn by doing it, you know, like we're, we're all so scared and it's, it, it's fear, you know? And, and I think what I notice is most, most of us come from a job, you know, like we're, we're working in a job and you know, like in your job, if you try something new and you fail, you could get reprimanded. You could lose your job. You could lose a promotion and stuff like that. So we always have that mindset of fear of if I try something and it doesn't work, I could, I have a fear of loss. And, and with internet marketing, doing this kind of stuff, there's no failing. You know, we're just trying things. You're just like throwing a lot of shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, some things work, some things don't. You know, there's no failing. There's just learning. So it's really just getting out of that mindset of trying something and failing. And if you can really just get, get that out of your mind to, you know, just I'm trying things. Some things will work. Some things don't. The more I try, the more I'll find out, find out what works. So it's really just doing that, um, you know, and, and just getting that out of your head. So fail, fail as fast as you can out there. Get as much feedback as you can. Refine it and move forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm learning by doing. I mean, I, I don't have any experience building software. I mean, I've been reading shit on Google, you know, like crazy for the last couple of years, and just I'm learning as I'm going, you know. And I've I've made a ton of mistakes. I probably could have built the software in half as much time and with half as much expense than I've spent. Um, but I'm learning, you know. I'm just doing it on the fly, and I'm I'm learning as I go, uh, you know. So I'll be better the next time. Keep going. Dave, thanks for having you on today, and I look forward. I'll put all your information in there so people can contact and get on the uh, email autoresponder campaign that you got set up because I'm sure it's going to awesome. be phenomenal. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep, you're welcome, Dave. See you, boss. See ya.